Another season is underway and the job of irrigating begins. This video will go over spring startup jobs and how ET and soil moisture inform decision making. Irrigation has a direct effect on tree growth and fruit quality. Water is often a scarce and valuable resource. Knowing how to get the best out of your system will help you get the best out of your trees. Your water supply should be tested for pH, natural mineral content, turgidity and any microbial contamination. It all starts with the water supply. Set up a winter service schedule for your pumps. You don't want them to fail you come summertime. During the season, it's good to observe the pump's performance when programmed irrigation sets change over. This is often where stress is put on the system that you cannot see unless you're observing it in person. Auto flushing filters are life changing if you irrigate with dirty water or have a steel mainline. There are two main spring jobs with these units. Open the housing, remove the screens and clean them either with a brush or pressure washer. The batteries for the flush solenoid are advised to be changed at the start of each season. Old disc filters need to be cleaned manually. Start the season clean and set up a schedule to inspect them regularly. Pressure gauges before and after the filters make a quick check easy. You can never have too many pressure gauges on an orchard. Different water sources have different water qualities and filtration requirements. Bore water is the cleanest and running water the dirtiest. Ponds allow water to settle and reduce the need for filtration. Remotely programmable valve controllers open the door to smart irrigation. Do a test run for all valves at the start of the season. Wires can be damaged and solenoids become stuck. If running multiple valves on the same program, then seriously look at investing in a variable speed drive. They're not foolproof, but are very good at equalizing system pressure with variable flow scenarios. Electric valves can get debris in the diaphragms. Learn how to service them. A slightly stuck open valve can let through a lot of water if not caught early. I like pressure gauges at each valve to identify this problem. When you turn on the pumps for the first time, have the blowouts open and ends of each drip line open also. This allows all the dirty water out of the lines and away from the emitters. I like ball valves at the end of each drip line. They're easy to open and they make flushing lines multiple times a year a quick method of preventing plugged emitters, which saves you time and saves you money down the line. Drip lines make water, a scarce resource, go over a larger area. Not only is the precipitation efficiency of drip greater than sprinklers, approximately 95% versus 70%, the actual per hectare volume is less than half that of sprinklers, giving you more irrigation power with less water. Once the system is up and running, conduct a bucket test to measure 30 minutes worth of water on three random emitters per valve. Match the outputs to the design system specifications. If they don't match, then work out why. If you don't know the system specs, then you can calculate it using the bucket test results, emitter spacing, and row width for drip. The process is broadly similar for sprinklers. But when to actually open the valves? Starts with ET. ET stands for evapotranspiration. It is the loss of water through evaporation and transpiration. Transpiration is the movement of water from the soil through the plant's roots, stem and leaves, and then out into the atmosphere. ET is almost always given as ETO. ETO is calculated from open grass pasture. A crop factor for other crops is given as a percentage of ETO. For example, apples have a crop factor of approximately 70%. This is the replacement rate of ET loss. E.g. a day with an ET of 10 mil has a 7 mil requirement to replace the estimated loss. However, the soil itself has a water holding capacity so water is already available and this available water needs to be considered. Soil moisture probes allow monitoring of volumetric moisture content. This typically ranges from 15% in very light soils up to 40% or more in heavy soils. I prefer to discuss soil moisture as a percentage of field capacity. Field capacity is when free water in the soil drains out and the soil particles hold the remaining water against the pull of gravity. Management thresholds can then be set as a percentage of field capacity, e.g. irrigate when field capacity is at 80%, or maintain field capacity at 90%. Weeds are controlled as they are competition for water. Bare soil under the tree allows optimum water infiltration. 
Soil type affects holding capacity. Light soils need to have short, frequent irrigation events to maintain water in the root zone. Understanding irrigation is one of the most important parts of growing trees with balanced vigor, target-sized fruit with good color. Make irrigating a planned and informed decision with targeted results in mind.